Now that everybody's paying attention, are you ready for your host for the night? Yeah. All right, give it up for Josh Saucier. Jared said he wanted to get like three more seconds of stage time tonight, so I hooked him up. <laughs> Actually, he did me a favor, so that was a really mean thing to say. Uh, welcome to the 955 Open Mic Night. It's uh, really great that you guys came. I see a lot of people I've never seen here before, which is awesome. It's normally just comics, so I'm happy to have a real audience. Uh, really quickly, you're going to see some great comics tonight. Uh, be polite. Don't, uh, don't talk or yell at the comedians unless they actually ask you a question. And if they do, don't raise your hand. It doesn't work. Just say something. Uh, if you guys have a, have a cell phone, turn it off or set it to vibrate. If you have a pager, uh, I want to buy some blow from you. <laughs> oh, good. Um, that's about it. Yeah, no talking. Be polite. Uh, if we have to, if you guys need to talk or take a phone call or whatever, step out into the landing or out into the blistering hot heat. Um, if you guys uh, need anything, Jason's taking care of us tonight. He's there right now, I'm pointing at him. Jason, our bartender, uh, he's coming around to the tables I see, but if you step up and grab him, it works just as well. Uh, be kind to him, he's, uh, he's the reason we're here, which is awesome. Like, it's really good to have him. Uh, all right, screw the rules. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave just gave me this look like, what? Um, all right, so uh, actually, a lot of my friends are here, which is cool. This is, I mean, it's a small show. I like it. I, I know most of the comics here. Uh, some new faces. And I'm actually, I'm going to take this opportunity to answer a question some people have had. Uh, I've had a lot of people coming up to me lately, and they, they've said, Hey, Josh, we've noticed, um, we've noticed that you're never in the same room at the same time as Superman. <laughs> and I, I want you guys to be the first to know that there's a reason for that. So I'm here to tell you, it's because that guy's afraid of me. I will fuck him up. All right, I, uh, yeah, I make, a, I make a lot of vintage pop culture references. Superman's not actually cool anymore. Um, not since he fell off that horse and broke his neck. I, uh, that's better than a laugh. It really is. <laughs> um, I uh, actually, I really like, uh, I really like GI Joe too. That's my other big. That's my hero. It's my idol from growing up. Uh, when I was a kid, I watched, uh, I watched GI Joe every single morning before I had to go to school. Uh, I watched the whole episode, but then I'd have to run out right at the end to catch the bus. So I missed like the last thirty seconds. I'd see the start of that little public service announcement they do, or roadblock to try and teach the kids a message. Uh, but I never heard, like, the moral of the story, so I'd spend the whole day going, what would happen if I played with Daddy's handgun? I can't wait till the bell rings, I'm gonna find out. Fun fact, I used to have a kid brother. <laughs> I, uh, I do, I really like G.I. Joe. I've actually, in a way, I have defined my entire existence by trying to be more like a G.I. Joe. And when I was a little kid, every day, I rolled out of bed, I felt exactly like G.I. Joe, I was going to go out, I was going to kick the fucking door down, find Cobra, and take him by storm. I didn't say fucking door, because I was six. <laughs> Today, same thing. Every single morning, I get out of bed, and I feel exactly like a G.I. Joe. My hand cramps like this, and I don't bend at the waist anymore. <laughs> I, I'm serious, I have to take a breather between putting on socks. <sighs> it's cardio. Uh, I actually don't watch a lot of, of modern TV. Like, it's not as cool as when I was a kid. Uh, these days, pretty much the only thing I enjoy on TV are late night commercials. Um, like, they, uh, and they're all drug commercials and they're all weird. Uh, Cialis, it's the new, uh, it's the new Viagra. Uh, their commercial has a couple of warnings on it. The Cialis commercial says, warning. Notify your doctor before taking Cialis if you have a heart condition, or if you're HIV positive. Well, first off, you should probably tell your doctor you're HIV positive. That would be a dick move not to mention. But if you are HIV positive and you cannot get your dick hard, you should probably just stop trying. You've clearly abused the privilege. Uh, Flomax is the other one I like. The pill that helps old men pee straight. 
They list exactly two side effects. Runny nose and a low semen count. I'm worried they're related. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like TV shows these days. I don't, uh, I don't like a lot of the movies. Uh, I go see a lot of movies with my friends, and I'm never, I'm never that enthralled. Uh, I keep waiting for something new to come out, so I'm, I'm always checking out, like, the spoilers online. I don't know if there's any Twilight fans, but the, the new one, Eclipse, is coming out. Uh, I actually, I read, uh, I read a spoiler, so if you guys are planning on seeing it. But, uh, it turns out, if you go see the, the new Twilight movie, and stay all the way through to the end credits and watch the whole thing, there's a twist where you're a fag. <laughs> Although, I'm not a Twilight fan, but I do, I do have to wonder, just, serious question. If you have, like, a big cross tattoo, and then you become a vampire, does that suck, like, forever? I guess it does. <laughs> um, I do like, uh, I do like old movies, though. Like, I mean, not old, old, but I like from the 90s, when they were cool. Uh, and, uh, I did make I did make a huge mistake. I converted all of my movies over to DVD when uh, when that was new because I thought it'd be awesome, uh, and that was cool for most of my movies. But I I got rid of all my old porn and got new porn DVDs. Porn is terrible on DVD. It's a waste of a technology. Uh, VHS it has a memory. It knows exactly where you stop watching it. <laughs> DVDs don't like you've got to fiddle with chapters, and I don't have that kind of time. Uh, so I, I keep watching, like, the beginning. I think I've seen the first eight minutes of Oops, I Fucked Your Grandmother, like, 50 times. <laughs> I wonder how it ends, but I don't have that kind of stamina. <laughs> but they, they do, porn is actually, they're at the forefront of every new technology. Like, they try out all, everything to try and, you know, boost their sales a little. And now they're talking about using that, like, James Cameron avatar, the 3D head cameras. Uh, and they're going to start doing 3D porn. <clears throat> But to, to see it at home, you've got to get like the big expensive 3D rig, like the in your living room, and that that seems excessive. If I wanted to spend thousands of dollars to feel like I had a disease-riddled, filthy whore in my living room, I wouldn't have broken up with my girlfriend. Um, I'm just kidding. She broke up with me. Uh, I actually I did I did live with a woman for a little while. We uh. We've, we got in fights, constantly, about stupid stuff, like uh, every morning after I did my G.I. Joe routine, I'd go get ready for work, uh, and I'd save time, you know, I'd, I'd pee in the shower. Every guy does that, and she would get mad at me, and I don't know what her problem was, because I aimed away from her feet. I'm still hygienic. Uh, or, uh, they're not all my fault, she, uh, she wanted to sign up for Twitter, and she was picking the, the username, and I told her, Honey, I don't care where you went to school or how good a team the Kentucky Wildcats are. You cannot be KY Kitty online. <laughs> uh, I think our last argument was uh, when she realized that I'd been lying to her for three months when I told her the G-spot was behind her tonsils. <laughs> it was funny because she didn't have her tonsils anymore. <sighs> All right, I, uh, I'm going to bring up your first... Uh, your first open mic comedian for the evening. Uh, this guy actually, he's uh, he's pretty cool. Uh, I just met him a month ago, and he's come out to a couple of shows since then. Uh, this will be his second time performing with us, and his second time performing on stage. Uh, and he actually brought friends, which makes him better than the rest of us. Put your hands together for David Ross. <laughs> Too. No. <laughs> no, that's when I graduated from high school, we were free. Good evening. How is everyone? Woo! Awesome. I, just, I just want you to know I'm the only one that really gives a shit. Everybody else is going to ask you. They just really want to know if you're drunk or not. I'm actually caring how you are. I'm a giver. I have notes. I can't remember shit. I'm getting older, so I have a few notes when I forget. Um, please laugh if I'm funny. And Laugh if I'm not funny, and I don't really care. <laughs> Went to the beach yesterday, and I got fried. Got my ass fried. 
which probably had something to do with the thong I was wearing. <laughs> Try to get that mental image out of your head later when you're eating. Um, I um, had three realizations about the beach. Number one, there are too damn many kids. And if you all have children, I apologize to you, but there are just too many kids. And I'm walking up and down the beach, and all these little children and throwing sand at the old man, meaning me, and I just, you know, the parents aren't watching them, and I try to take a frisbee from one of them and throw them out into the ocean and say, go get the frisbee, go get the frisbee, but they wouldn't do it, but that's what I'm going to do next time. Uh, number two, as a sidebar, I've come up with a solution to the oil spill. Just put a really, really, really big tampon out in the water. It's going to soak up all that nasty stuff. It kind of looks like a lighthouse. Got a rope hanging from it people can swing on. It's the best of all worlds. And lastly, far too many people have very positive body images at the beach. I, uh, you know, I, I did some research on the internet and I think I'm anorexic because they say if you look in a mirror and you think you're fat, that's what anorexia is. <laughs> so basically I'm anorexic. But there are a whole hell of a lot of people on the beach that are anorexic as well, right? <laughs> and it's always the ones, oh, the ones are in Speedos that shouldn't be the two-piece, should be in the one-piece, the one-piece should be in the two-piece, and the beach was full of it yesterday. And then there's always the really, 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 really hairy guy coming down the beach. So hairy you can't tell if he's walking toward you or away from you because he's just got just as much hair on his back as he's got on his front. Unfortunately, I'm becoming that guy. But because I am anorexic, I know how to dress. I pretty much wear jeans and a turtleneck when I go out on the beach so nobody knows what it's going to look like. Um, I'm pretty much accident prone. None of my friends are going to laugh at that. Um, I cracked a rib one time on the toilet. <laughs> well, think about it. Um, I got uh, a concussion from a suitcase falling out of an overhead on a plane. Knocked me out. I had to live in uh, land in Cincinnati. And a lawnmower. Um, Rolled, rolled over my foot and cut off several of my toes and now I have that which goes back to those kids at the beach that see me walking down the beach it's five toes and two toes and five toes and two toes and I'm thinking I'm just going to scare those freaking kids with that foot go up and wrap them around their leg and they're going to get out of my fucking face every time I'm walking down the beach being accident prone I don't know if you all have noticed you know, on the interstate now those billboards XYZ emergency room, 16 minute wait, 41 minute wait, 38 minute wait. Is that really helpful? I'm having a stroke, but it's 51 minutes, so I think I'll go tomorrow. Doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me. Um, my dear mother, speaking of doctors, my dear mother, um, I'm 46 years old, and I realize I don't look so good to be 46, which is fine. Had to take mom to the uh, hospital, the emergency room, um, doctor came out, said, Mr. Ross, I'd like to speak to you about your wife. <laughs> Literally, she's, she's 79. And I said, well, that's actually my mother. And he said, oh, well, she looks 70, pause, but so do you. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. But then I got to thinking, maybe there's an angle. You know, if I tell people I'm 46, I look like hell. If I tell people I'm 70, I don't look so bad to be 70, do I? I said, I don't look so bad to be 70, do I? One nod. Thank you, man. Um, mother, um, any Seinfeld fans in here? Did anybody ever see the episode where Jerry was dating someone whose name rhymed, shut up, whose name rhymed with a female body part? Yes. And he, you know, he went through Gipple and Mulva. Anybody like to guess what my mother's name is? Dolores. 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 
My phone rang, literally, I'm not making it up. My phone rang for three days after that from friends saying, hey man, did you see the Seinfeld episode? Wasn't that funny? That's your mother's name, it's your mother's name. Did you call and tell her? Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of forgot to call and tell my mother that a TV show had made fun of her name sounding like clitoris. I guess I should have done that, but I completely forgot. She's getting a little older. She's certainly not senile, but she's getting up. She's got a great social life and she's out and about, but she's just not getting certain things. If we have a family trip to take, she always wants to share a hotel room. And I'm sorry, no 46-year-old man wants to share a hotel room with his 79-year-old mother. And she's just like, yeah, I don't see why we can split the cost, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, under no circumstances, need to see my mother's bra hanging on a shower rod or one of her pubic hairs stuck to a bar of soap. Just, no interest. She complains that her back hurts all the time. Never mind that her purse where he eats 45 pounds of crackers and sweet and low packets. Most of which are half sweet and low packets because she's put it in her hot tea, but she doesn't want to throw the other half away. <laughs> she tells me stories that I neither need to know about nor want to know about. Margaret. Dave, did I tell you Margaret had her hip replaced? I have no clue who Margaret is, and I don't care who <laughs> Margaret is. No, Mom, you didn't tell me. Well, they took her catheter out this morning, and she had been able to urinate. <laughs> Mom, I don't know who she is. I don't care about her urina urination. She goes on and on and gives me daily updates on Margaret's, uh, you know, <laughs> peeing. Um, she loves Cracker Barrel, or as I like to call it, Cracker Fucking Barrel, because I can't stand that place. All oh, the, the food, you know, being anorexic, I don't like to eat a lot of what they have. But it's all that shit in the lobby for sale. You know, little soaps and candles and you know, a lamp made of shelves dressed like Santa Claus with Virginia Tech socks on it or whatever. Who the hell needs all that stuff? And, he, and of course, it's always a 45-minute wait. You know, they're two tables full, and they make you wait 45 minutes, so you buy that shit. And I won't go in there. Invariably, Mom, where would you like to go? Cracker Barrel, they got a delicious steak. I just love their steak. <laughs> And speaking of buying shit, I, I have to tell you all, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but is, are there any HSN or QVC freaks in here? No, not so much. Well, I hate to tell you, sometimes like if I'm bored, like if I'm at home, I like to watch QVC. And there's this one woman, Jeannie Bice, who has a company called Quacker Factory. And she sells the biggest bunch of crap you have ever seen in your life. I mean, culottes for 4X women, you know, with rhinestones going up the side, and sweaters with a lighthouse on it. Well, the funniest one she ever sold, I thought. And I mean, I'm always amazed because the counter's at the bottom selling, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 of these things at 49 bucks. Million dollars worth of shit, basically. The funniest one she ever had was right around Easter, and it was a t-shirt bedazzled with a martini glass of rhinestones. And her comment was, because she's one of these sickos that's positive and optimistic and upbeat and perky, she said, what says Christ the Lord is risen today any more than a bedazzled martini glass? <laughs> No, that's, that's really great, Jeannie Bice. We've got to order one of those. So I got it for mom, you know. She, she can wear it to Cracker Barrel with all of middle America. So anyway, that's kind of me, kind of my dysfunctional, a, a part of my dysfunctional life. And I uh, hope I get a chance to tell you all more about it later. Thanks. much taller than me, apparently. That was great. We need you here for a third time. Keep it going for David Ross. Woo!